Now that we've talked about relations, we've talked about closures, we've talked about composition, uh, we're going to start talking about special kinds of relations. And the first one of those is going to be equivalence relations. The idea behind an equivalence relation is we want to generalize the idea of equal to to objects that aren't necessarily numbers. So equivalence relations generalize the idea of equality. Uh, there are many times in mathematics where objects that aren't necessarily equal are identical from some point of view. Uh, and in fact, we've already seen a couple of these. Um, for example, even though the statement not P or P is equivalent to the statement that's always true, they're different statements. So this equivalence is an equivalence relation. Um, it's a type of relation with certain properties. So we're going to talk about equivalence relations in general, and then we're going to turn our attention to a special type of equivalence relation on the integers. So an equivalence relation is any relation that is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. Uh, and if you pay attention to the equivalence to the relation x equals y um, on the set of real numbers, but really any set, um, that also has these properties. It's reflexive, any object is equal to itself. It's symmetric, if x is equal to y, then that means y is equal to x. And it's transitive, because if x equals y and y equals z, then that means x is going to have to equal z as well. So our first example of an equivalence relation is going to be the relation x equals y on any set. And I have to uh, be a little careful with my language here because I, I need to specify what I mean by the relation x equals y. I mean the set of ordered pairs, the set of all x, y, such that x is equal to y. So when I say the relation and then I say a sentence right after that, I'm referring to a set of ordered pairs that for which that sentence is true. So that's what I mean when I use that kind of language. Um, another example is the relation cardinality of x equals cardinality of y on a collection of sets. That's another example of an equivalence relation. Another example that we just talked about is the relation where phi is equivalent to psi on a collection of logical statements. And here's maybe a more concrete example. Uh, let's have the relation R on the set v, w, x, y, z, defined by the set of pairs v, 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 y, w, 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 x, w, z, x, w, x, 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 z, y, v, y, y, z, w, z, x, z, z. We can diagram this relation with this digraph. V and Y are related to each other, and they're each related to themselves. W, X, and Z are also all related to each other, and also themselves. So what we notice when we do the digraph for an equivalence relation is that the equivalence relation partitions are set into these sort of islands, right? Nothing from the V and Y part is going to reach the WXZ part and vice versa. So that gives rise to the definition of equivalence class. Suppose that R is an equivalence relation on the set X. The equivalence class of an element little x is the set of all elements that are equivalent to that element. So in the above example,
we had the equivalence class of W is equal to the set W, X, Z. And the equivalence class of V is equivalent is equal to the set V, Y. Now, we name the equivalence classes after what is called one of their representatives. But the choice of representative shouldn't matter. So we could have just as easily called this set the equivalence class of X or the equivalence class of Z. And we could have called this set just as easily the equivalence class of Y. It shouldn't matter which representative we pick.